Howdy everyone, I'm Biscuit, and I am back. I have a new camera, I have a new haircut, so the quarantine hair is over. You can probably see the physical aging I've gone through since I tried to make my last video. And today I want to talk about an interesting method of how to multiply numbers in your head, you know, without using a calculator. But, you know, you can always use a calculator to double check stuff, or, you know, if you're really lazy, you know. So maybe this is a method that other people have talked about, but I haven't really seen it online really elsewhere. I haven't seen any videos about it, but all this is going to require is just a bit of memorization of the perfect squares. So let's dive into it. Before we get into this, I just want to say that there's a really bad stigma about who can, and especially who can't understand math or physics. I just want to say that I really believe that you, yes, you sitting there and watching this could really understand this. I mean, you got this. Okay. So now let's just dive into the technique. Okay, here we have a classic multiplication table. Maybe we've seen one of these back in elementary school, but just knowing that everything is right, you take one number, you multiply it by another one, and their cross section is the result. So four times five is 20. So we have four fives. So five plus five is 10, plus another five is 15, plus another five is 20. Again, we're trying to learn a trick to multiply larger numbers in our head. So the basis of this trick will require us to move diagonally along this table. So say if we started at 25, we would be moving, you know, this direction or this direction. Moving horizontally or vertically is fairly straightforward as you simply are adding or subtracting one of the numbers in your multiplication. So by starting at 25, I can get to 20 by just removing one five. Note that the perfect squares have been highlighted in green here and run along the diagonal of this table. And perfect squares are just numbers multiplied by themselves. So here we have four multiplied by four is 16. That's all we mean by a perfect square. So we're going to work from these perfect squares. So it does help to be able to recall them easily. You know, if you're a weirdo like me, you've memorized a lot of them for no reason other than weird math tricks like this. Okay, so there's two versions of this trick. The first that where we move diagonally directly from a perfect square. So say if we started at 25, we'd be moving diagonally across from that. In other words, so this first version of this method is going to be worked when the sum of the two numbers you want to add is even. So if I took five and added it to five, I would get 10. So it would work for that one. Or if you want to do say like seven times five, seven plus five is 12, which is also even. So it's going to work for anything where you start from a perfect square and then move diagonally from that. Okay. So how does this trick work? Okay. First thing we need to do is note the distance from the perfect square. So let's look at an example. Let's start from six times six. So that gives us 36. So moving one space away, so it, either way we get the same answer. So let's say we move to seven times five here, we get 35. And so that's just one step off. Okay. We notice that if we move one space off any perfect square, we, we note that the answer is always one off. So 49 goes to 48, 64 goes to 63. So it seems pretty general, it works for all other squares as well. So if we move two spaces off, from 36, go two diagonal, we notice that the answer is 32, which is four lower. So we'd go from any other perfect square, well, two sp spaces off is always going to give us uh, an answer that's four lower. So we go to any of these, 81, 77 is four off. Okay, so taking one more step back, we notice that we can get any of these numbers by taking this perfect square and subtracting by the square of the number of steps off. So we go one off, one squared, go off two, two squared is four. We go three off, that is three squared, which is nine. So let's sh actually show why that works and then work a little bit more with it. Okay, so let's prove why that works. We'll start with just an example of one step off. So say that we started from six times six, uh, then this N would be six and we wanted to go one step off. So six plus one would be seven and six minus one would be five. So to prove why the answer is just a square of the number of steps. If we multiply this out, we'll get four terms. So recall when you're doing this, some people like to say this is the foil technique or whatever, but we're going to have four numbers that, you know, end up in this product. We get n times n, that is n squared. We get n times negative one, which is just n. We get just positive n. And then we get negative one. So we notice something special happens in this particular product. We notice that these two middle terms cancel out. And we're only left with the two outer terms. We're only left with n squared minus one. Okay, so this is one step off. So now let's do a generic k number of steps off and then we'll have our general formula. 
think that's just the wind. I don't think the other people are home yet. If they come home, I have to stop and try again. And I do not want to try again. Okay, here we have the same thing where instead we're going with n plus k and n minus k. So k, we can choose to be whatever we want in the end. It could be one step, two steps, whatever we want to choose. We'll do the same thing. We'll have to do that one FOIL method. We'll get our four terms out and then figure out what happens. There's n times n, so n squared. Then we get n times negative k, so n times negative k. We, then we get k times n, so plus and k and then we get k oops then we get k times negative k which turns out is just minus k squared so again these two middle terms cancel out they're the same thing but one has a negative sign so it goes away we're just left with n squared minus k squared again n is our starting point the perfect square we're choosing to start from and k is the number of steps off so you know, let's work with a few examples of why this works. Okay, so let's look at some more extreme examples of this working just to make sure everything, you know, is going as expected. So let's start with n being equal to 6, so that we get 6 times 6. And let's say we wanted to move a whole 5 steps off, so we would get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we should get 11. So in our case, that would be n equals 6 and k equals 5. So that'd be 6 squared minus 5 squared. So that'd be 36 minus 25, and we take that all, we get 11. And that is in fact the answer that we get when just looking at, at the multiplication table. One, two, three, four, five, five steps off is 11. So this is, seems to be generally working. You can use more examples and make sure that, you know, convince yourself that this is working. But as far as this goes, this is probably good enough for me. Okay, so that was the first version of this method. So that only works when the two numbers you want to multiply sum to an even number, or, you know, in other words, looking at the table, you start from a perfect square and move diagonally. So this next version is going to work for all the odd sums. So on the table, this would look like the numbers that are sort of in between the perfect squares. And again, we moving diagonally from these. So let's start with an example. So the numbers this work for are these in-between numbers for the perfect squares and then moving diagonally from these. So if we start from an example, say now six times five, we can see that starting from 30, we move one step off from that. That is two less than we started. If we move two steps off, it's six less than we started. And if we move three steps off, that is 12 less than we started. Now, if we go and look at other examples, we are two off six off then 12 off this is something you know that's also very general there's going to be another formula just like we had uh in the first method and let's go and derive that and then so we can have something general to work with okay so here we have our general formula so the only difference from before is that we have additional plus one term so we compare it to this above we just have this plus one term and that just means we have a starting point that's a little different it's just one off from a perfect square so you know one above so if we go and multiply this all out, we're gonna get a total of six terms as opposed to before where we got four terms. It's because of the extra plus one. So again, we're gonna get, you know, if we start from n, we'll get n times n, n squared, and then n times negative k, which will be negative nk. So we get n squared minus nk. So here's these new terms. We'll get one times n and one times negative k. So we'll get plus n negative k. And then we have these final two terms, k times n and minus k squared. So plus n times k and then minus k squared. So a few of these terms are gonna cancel out just like last time. The nk's are gonna cancel out. We have plus nk and minus nk. And then we have these extra two terms that are running around. So I'm going to group them in a way that I think is a little more aesthetically pleasing. So let's do that. Let's use black. If n squared plus n, then we have minus k squared minus k. So we can group these together, you know, simplify them one more step into a way that I think will make more sense. So we have n times n plus 1 minus k, k plus 1. Okay, here we get an answer that's almost identical to the previous one, except that instead of n squared minus k squared, we have the an n plus one here instead. 
these terms a little differently. Again, looking up instead of n squared and k squared to get n times n plus one and k times k plus one. And so it's a little bit more difficult to keep this in your head, but you know, let's use it for some examples, make sure it works and you know, let's roll with it. Okay, so let's use this for an example. Um, let's say we start with 56. So that means n would equal seven. And we, it just means that this left term on the right is gonna be 56. That's gonna be our starting point. That's gonna be when k equals zero, we're no steps off. And say we wanted to move, say one, two, three, four steps off. So the answer we should get is 36. So let's see what happens for this term on the right. So four steps off, k would equal four. It'd be four times, well, four plus one would be five. So it would be 56 minus four times five. And that should be 56 minus 20. So 56 minus 20 is 36. And that gave us the exact answer that we expected to do. This one's a little bit harder to do in your head, but maybe with some practice, you could get this down. I tend to use the first method more. You know, again, these are exclusive methods. They only work for certain amount of numbers, but uh, I probably need some more practice with this one to be actually be able to do use it in daily life and things like that. So I have Wolfram Alpha, you know, up here. Um, so I have no multiplication tables to base my answers off. We're simply gonna be doing these techniques and trying to do that in our head. So let's start off using the first method. That should be a little bit more simple. Say I want to multiply 14 times 12. So that's one step of 13 times 13. So that means that using the first method, I would just take 13 times 13, which is 169. Again, I'm not cheating, it's just Wolfram Alpha up in my head. Um, subtracted by one. So 169 minus one is 168. So I should expect 14 times 12 is 168. So let's do it something a little bit harder. Say we wanted to multiply 14 times 11 in our head. Since adding those together gives us an odd number, we need to use the second method. So that's one step of 13 times 12. 13 times 12 is 156 because 13 squared minus 13 is 156. So the method would tell us we need to subtract one times one plus one, which is two off. So that would mean 14 times 11 is 154. So let's do that. 14 times 11 is 154. So there we go. So you can use it for you know comp more complicated examples, anything you want. So it's gonna require a bit of mental math in your head, but as, as far as for me, it's a lot less crazy than trying to multiply the whole number in your head using other methods like straight doing it. Okay, so we can see that this trick is especially helpful for numbers that are only a few steps off of the perfect squares or you know the one off for the second method. So you just have to try it for yourself to see how it goes. Okay, thanks for everyone so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope this was helpful or insightful or maybe even entertaining, I don't know. Okay, thanks for watching, bye. Bruh. That's going to be awful to edit. Good luck, editor biscuit. Bruh. Why? Why? What the f? What the f? Let me move the thing. There we go.